Welcome back to the Maxify Getting Started video series. I'm Ed O'Connor Giles, CTO for Maxify, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to track your budget throughout the year within our budget tracker tool. Now if you haven't yet created your budget for the year, uh, please take a look at my other video which talks about how to get started and create a budget. But this video starts with the fact that you have a budget and you've already uh, allocated all your um, discretionary spending to different categories that you want to track. And so what you're going to do to start tracking is you're going to go to the transaction screen here. And this is the initial transaction setup. So here we're basically taking what you uh, said you would do, you know, spend in each category in your budget by year end. And we're just... Uh, prorating it essentially to the current month. So I'm in February here, so this is two twelfths of the amount that's shown in the year end is what we're going to put for the year to date amount. Um, and this will just create one transaction, you know, in each each of those categories. Um, you can use this, but you can also, you, you probably want to adjust these values to be reality. Uh, so this, if you're, if your expected labor is 200,000, but paychecks to date, you've only actually received 30,000 uh, dollars, you know, change, change that and make sure these, these are all accurate. Alternately, you can just use these to enter the first transaction in any of these categories. You can also zero them out and just start from scratch, uh, just by, uh, uh, just by entering transactions, uh, once you, once you save this screen. Um, you can you know so once you've saved these transactions you can you can just add new transactions as they as they uh, arise uh, from your credit card statement or wherever you're tracking that you can uh, just add in here uh, some description you can add in you can select uh, the category this is labor earnings and I got an extra thousand um, dollars and uh, you can you can sort this table by any of these ca um, different uh, column headers. You can edit existing transactions here. You can, uh, by clicking the edit button, and that pops it up here where you can then adjust the amount of that entry. You can also uh, delete uh, if you need to remove transactions. Now when we go back to the overview screen, what you'll see is that um, we're now, we now actually have some, some information here, some colors that tell us whether uh, we're on track, if it's green, whether we're, uh, in the case of income, whether we're uh, we've got less than we expected by this point in the year, or in the case of spending, whether we're overspending, uh, you know, where we should be at, at this point in the year. And these will turn yellow if it's uh, just slightly beyond what we would expect for this point in the year. It'll turn red if it's something where, yeah, you're really significantly over or under, um, you know, tracking that amount. Now, um, over here in the discretionary spending column, you'll see that if you do need to change the budgeted amount of discretionary spending, you can do that by clicking the edit button. You can change the name of the category. You can change the amount. Uh, you know, so this is for your target, for your projection of how much you are going to spend in the year in this particular category. You can remove uh, different categories and add budget categories. So you definitely have the ability to to adjust your budget as you need it in the discretionary spending area. And then if you want to zero in on any of these transactions, you can click on the number, let's say for food, and that'll take you to the transactions that have been entered for food. And, you know, you can enter... Uh, another uh, another transaction here um, and when we go back to the overview screen you'll now see that you know that that has been updated uh, to reflect the new transaction um, you can if you download the Excel spreadsheet now you the transactions will be included in that uh, in that spreadsheet so that if you decide you need to use it in a different program or, or you want to track in Excel, you can there as well. Now, uh, so I've told you how you can edit these discretionary spending uh, targets if your budget changes, but what about these other uh, items over here in income and fixed spending and saving? You don't see any edit capability here. That's because those numbers are coming straight out of your base plan. And uh, if you need to adjust those, you need to adjust your base plan. So let's say um, I got my property tax amount wrong. I just found out that my property tax uh, is higher than I expected. Well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the base profile. I'm going to go into that housing setup screen, 
I'm going to go change my property taxes. Let's say it's $2,500 now uh, instead of $2,000 and save that change. Now, uh, then I'm going to go run my uh, base plan again to see how that uh, change impacts my base plan. And what it's going to mean is that my I have now some additional fixed spending because of that additional uh, housing expense, and my discretionary spending uh, is is going to be lower. And what you'll see is that I, I get this notice up here at the top of my base plan dashboard. It says your base plan has changed since you set up the budget tracker. And so we want to review those those changes to keep the budget tracker up to date. So we automatically detected that the base plan is different from what you've budgeted for, for this year, is different from what you budgeted for this year. Um, and you would see the same result actually if you just clicked on the budget uh, uh, link in the top. So we're going to review those changes and what you'll see here is that okay as expected my property tax went up uh, by that 500 I entered well but there's also a few other changes that are maybe unexpected um, uh, but but definitely makes sense when you when you kind of understand how Maxify works and particularly my discretionary spending you can see has reduced a little bit and that's because I've got this new every year I've got an additional amount that I'm paying for property tax uh, that's increasing over time so I am going to have to spend a little bit less uh, every year uh, in discretionary spending so it, these are my this is showing me what my current budget is and this is showing me what the new base plan says my my budget amount should be for this year if I accept that I can save if I want to go maybe back and change my base plan because I'm not happy with that I can I can cancel out of here and adjust those numbers but once I'm ready to accept the the uh, the new amounts I click save and then what we'll see over here uh, in the tracker is that my property tax amount uh, in that category has been increased and also I've got a decrease in my uh, discretionary spending so I had some money that wasn't budgeted so that's not that big of a problem that my budget shifted by a, a few hundred dollars um, because I, I had some money not budgeted but it would give me a warning if I have o if I was over budget in my discretionary spending so so I could then a adjust that so I hope that gives you a good sense of how to work throughout the year with your budget tracker to accommodate changes that may occur in your base plan as well as just to kind of keep track and enter transactions um, to, to, to uh, make sure that you're staying on track with your, um, with your financial plan.